welcome everyone to the lecture series of uh, marketing research and analysis. So, uh, in today's lecture we will talk about uh, to, uh, in this lecture and the you know next one we will be mostly discussing about data, what is data and uh, how to manage the data. So, the term that I have given to this lecture is uh, you can see data purification. Why I am saying purification? The simple reason being whenever a researcher does any uh, study, uh, he collects data and on basis of those data he makes an analysis, uh, the researcher makes an analysis, right. But what if your data is uh, not a healthy data or not in a good condition, right? What happens then? It is like you know uh, the doctor uh, treats you without understanding your problem. Similarly, the researcher analyzes the data or uh, treats the data or tries to make a analysis on the data, but without understanding whether the data itself is in a healthy condition or not. Right? So, uh, before you uh, try to do anything, you should first be very sure that the, your data is a healthy and a clean data. Right? So, it should be healthy and clean, why I mean uh, if it is healthy it is a clean data generally. So, uh, how do you do that and what happens if you do not do this? So, if you do not do this that means, you would be uh, you know interpreting on an output which might be very different from what actually should have been happening. Right? That means, uh, in a test of significance or a test of hypothesis, you might be uh, trying to say that a hypothesis is insignificant which on the contrary should have been significant just because you handled your data wrongly you have not corrected them that is why you have faced this problem. So, this is very important and uh, one should not go uh, further uh, any researcher should not go further be it in the field of any field because every field requires data be it in the social science management, uh, medical professional, uh, engineer there is data everywhere. So, this data has to be corrected let us see. So, what do I say here in the first scene if you see it is called data cleaning cleaning. So, your data has come to you now you need to clean the data. So, what it is saying data cleaning is the process of detecting you detect and correct correction involves sometimes even removing in an extreme case right. Corrupt or inaccurate records from a record set table or database and refers to identifying incomplete incorrect inaccurate or irrelevant parts of the data and replacing it with more you know clear data clean data right. So, this is uh, the first part cleaning itself tells you that you need to identify first see where the problem is you go to the doctor and the doctor does not even test you properly and says if you have a pain in your abdomen it is a kidney problem how it is it is very very incorrect to say that right. So, it could be just a, a gastric problem or an acidic problem of your body. So, understanding uh, first of all where is the problem lying is very important. The second uh, thing that says is data screening that means, when you screen the data it is the process of ensuring the researchers data is clean and ready. It is to finally, say ki yes the data is clean if it is not clean it is not ready then you need to correct it further right before you conduct any further statistical analysis. Data must be screened in order to ensure the data is usable, reliable and valid for testing theory. Now, the, that means uh, finally, that means what in order to do any you know for example, we have seen you are uh, going to appear in interview and you are extremely nervous right and the interviewer without making you comfortable if he starts uh, you know asking you a volley of questions you get more and more nervous and your <coughs> maybe your output becomes very very poor. In such a condition the true uh, skill of the uh, you know uh, the uh, candidate is not known. So, if you want to know the true skill of the candidate it is better that first you should be made he should be re made relaxed and then he should be asked questions. So, that he can give his best uh, in that condition right. So, data analysis can only begin when the data is clean and ready. Okay. How do I clean my data? So, there are basically three problems we will talk about. The first problem is the one of the most discussed problems is missing data. What if there is a if my data is missing or there is a large portion of the data which is not available to me. 
the question would further come ki why it is not available what is wrong with that is it deliberate or not deliberate anything so first is missing data second is outliers now let me just show you a missing data for a case now if you can see this file this is an spss uh, file where if you see there are different variables right so uh, v1 v2 up to v14 and if you see in v1 there are certain datas in v2 there are certain datas and everywhere you can see some blank spots right some blank ones so these blanks and in this case if you can see for row, uh, the respondent 10 maybe uh, there is a large number of blank spaces correct so it is uh, if you can go down i think if you can scroll this way yeah so uh, you can see that there are this case this study has got some missing data now what do i do and the missing data is distributed both in the metric scale which is you can see from v1 to v10 uh, v9 this data is mostly in a in a metric scale and v10 to v14 is basically if i am not wrong is a non metric scale and uh, yeah it's a nominal scale you can see here right so uh, what happens uh, when the scale is metric and non metric also that also i'll tell you right the second case is a case of outlier now what is this outlier and why it is important i think we have discussed in the uh, in the in the past also outliers are very important and they need to be identified now what if suddenly you are trying to find the income of people or let's say the speed at which you can run and uh, we are trying to find the average speed of a class and suddenly we find somebody like is usain bolt coming into the class uh, you know uh, uh, becomes one of the candidates so you see by adding usain bolt the mean and standard deviation is suddenly uh, changing the parameters of estimation is suddenly changing so this will give you a, a not a true figure right it can give it will be rather a very uh, you can say a concocted figure right so outliers are very important in a data set for example let's say if this is how the data is spread up and suddenly you find there is a data point here here so these data points look like more or less outliers and in the presence of outliers can uh, again create problems for the data analysis the third thing is the normality now what is normality in before going to any statistical analysis one needs to understand what is the distribution pattern of the sample right now how is the sample distributed if the sample is distributed in a uniform uniform manner in a unified way and it is uh, in a in a is following a normal distribution we say that most of the statistical tools and techniques can be utilized right however if the data is not normally distributed then either it is a special case we may think of some other distributions for example a binomial distribution or uh, a poisson distribution right or uh, you know some other distribution but the point is our analysis is dependent that in statistics we are saying it has to, if the data is not normal then most of our uh, analysis will not be correct especially in case of social sciences right so the question is if the, my data is not normal what should i do should i go back to the field should i collect the data again or uh, should i uh, can i do something with it so these three cases are very important uh, to be checked there is something sometimes people also say linearity is also equal important but i'll tell you if your data is mostly normal then linearity is automatically taken care of generally speaking right so if the data is linear or non linear what happens for example you must have heard about a linear uh, you know regression or a regression on a non linear data so in both conditions how does it matter right how how it uh, changes right the effect of the study on the study okay so next let's uh, start the first one missing data information not available for a subject right or case that means on a particular variable or a particular respondent there is a problem about whom other information is available but some of the information is not available right so missing data often occur when a respondent fails to answer either he is failing to answer one or more questions in a survey so uh, it is not necessary that he is only failing to survey uh, you know i'm sorry failing to answer but it could be also that he uh, is uh, not interested in filling your questionnaire he is uh, uh, you know not willing to answer right so there could be several reasons behind it 
any systematic event external to the respondent such as data entry errors right or data collection problems or any action on the part of the respondent that leads to the missing data. Now, what is this missing data process? Now, missing data process is saying any systematic event external such as data entry or let us say collection problem data collection or any action which that leads to the missing data. Now, when you have uh, for example, by chance you have filled in the data and you have missed some data right by doing it fast you have missed 2, 3 data or put in some wrong data right or by putting some questions right uh, which are uh, not very clear to the maybe the respondent he has not filled it up. So, this could be the problem that can occur ok. There is a 4 step process for identifying the missing data and applying the remedies. So, let us see one by one. So, this is how it looks like right. The first step is determine the type of missing data. Now, the question is what do you mean by this type of missing data? Now, are there different types of missing data? Now, yes there are let us see. The first is saying is the missing data ignorable that means, what is what happens uh, if I ignore the missing data? I am not uh, ok, I am not worried about the missing data. The patient has come the doctor the doctor is uh, ignoring the symptoms may be right. So, sometimes if he ignores the symptoms it is fine it does not matter, but suppose in some other conditions the patient is a seriously uh, serious patient of kidney uh, you know renal problem. Then if he is ignoring the symptoms it could be extremely dangerous, but suppose it is a simple case of let us say uh, a, a slight acidity in my chest right uh, a burning sensation and I know it is not but big of a uh, you know serious problem and if I miss it ignore it, it can be still manageable it is ok right because I know naturally I will get correct in some time. But if it is a problem related to my kidney or something then missing it or ignoring it could be extremely fatal right. Same thing you can bring the analogy here determine the type of is the missing data ignorable no yes if it is yes it is ignorable you can ignore. So, apply specialized techniques for ignorable missing data when it is ignorable sometimes we uh, just ignore and carry forward the process of uh, you know uh, analyzing the data. Second if it is no let us say you cannot ignore that means it is a sufficiently large problem right. Then you go to the second step determine the extent how much is the extent of the missing data is the extent of missing data large enough to warrant action right. First was whether the problem was important or not. Second is how much is the problem suppose I am having a burning sensation for maybe a day which was ignorable fine, but suppose it is happening me uh, to me if to th out of 30 day a days in a month maybe uh, 15 days or 20 days then it could lead to ulcer correct. So, uh, is it uh, sufficient large enough if I am having 15 days or if I am having let us say only 3 days in a month or 2 days in a month is it ignorable? The question lies there that is where you need to ex use your own logic right. So, if it is yes is the extent of missing data substantial enough to warrant action yes then comes the point analyze the cases and variables right. Should cases or variables be deleted due to high levels of missing data? Yes, then you delete the cases or the variables with high missing. Suppose a particular respondent out of 10 questions he has not filled up 8. So, that means uh, we should it is better to ignore the respondent the case correct. Now, the question is if it is a no should cases and will be deleted due to high levels missing data? No, because if you start deleting every time maybe you will land up in very few respondents or very few variables that is not a, a desirable thing. So, what happens next? So, the third step if you go here determine the extent of missing data is the extent of missing data substantial enough to warrant action? No, it is not substantial enough to warrant action. In that case what you do diagnose the randomness of the missing data process. Now, what kind of uh, randomness is there? There are two basically problems one we say missing at random the other is called missing completely at random. Now, what does it mean? I will explain you it is very simple nothing to get uh, you know confused and why it is important also let me tell you that. Suppose it is missing completely at random. Now, there are two situations missing at random missing completely at random. Now, what is this completely at random completely at random is means that means there is no dependence there is no reason why it is happening there is no sufficient reason right. 
it is just a random process just imagine somebody has just not filled it is no logic behind it but had there been a reason behind it for example somebody for example uh, in my case i have brought an example for, for example it has been seen that people uh, with different age groups for example senior and junior people or uh, let's say uh, uh, senior aged group people and junior uh, young people now when the blood pressure was checked for this uh, yeah, they found it was found that in a study that senior people tend to record their blood pressure and uh, give the data right report the data but young people tend to ignore the blood pressure and it was a case of a missing data in that case now that means if i am trying to make a study on age and uh, you know uh, blood pressure there i can see that age at a particular age if there is a missing data could be possible that most of the people who are not reporting or missing they must be young people so in such a condition it is a missing at random so there is a there is a relationship there is a relationship and that is why this becomes more complicated and little uh, you know risky to uh, handle it right had it been a completely a random case then you need not worry much select the once you have done it right so if you are having a missing at random approach the best thing is modeling based approaches now modeling based approaches basically uh, we use a maximum likelihood approach right where we use the you know uh, estimation and the em approach we say that em approach is estimated par estimation and this is the parameter uh, values right so okay so the em approach so uh, this is the this is basically the modeling based approaches you used right suppose this is a completely at random approach then what happens there are you use that different types of imputation imputation is nothing but replacement right method do you want to replace the missing data with values yes or no suppose no then do you want to use only cases with complete data and use all possible valid data fine go ahead suppose you don't want to impute no issues right looking at the extent of the data if it is not much then you not worry but suppose you feel no it is large the problem is large i need to impute the data replace the data select the data application method which method will you adopt right do you want to use known values or calculate replacement values from the uh, valid data now what does it mean that means i can if i want if i want to uh, replace the value i can do one thing i can use some earlier data let's say respondent 1 has a large no, uh, respondent 5 has a large number of uh, let's say uh, let's say respondent 1 2 3 4 5 respondent 1 and respondent 4 are very similar in nature let's say let's say right and here there are some missing data but here i have found he has got a x1 x2 x3 now what i can do is in some conditions i may use the values of the respondent 4 for uh, filling up respondent 1's data right so this is one possibility i can do there are several methods if you can see for example uh, uh, complete data only right complete case approach a method where this is the best method obviously when you use any for complete case then it is always the best thing or all available subsets approach case substitution so how do you substitute through a mean substitution through a regression method many methods are there right this is the known values means which i explained here then you can either you have through the known values so case substitution case i said case substitution this case has been substituted here right or hot and cold take up imputation this is something like a similar kind of a situation is seen right and then they try to replace the value i'll explain that then is the calcul you calculate the values and you apply this method the regression based method and the mean substitution method this method has been found to be the most significant the best approach uh, the best method right so let us go each one of them determine the type of missing data so as i say is the missing data a part of the research design and under the control of the researcher whether the causes and impacts are truly known or not okay so you need to understand what is the type of the missing data how important it is for me right in my study so if it is ignorable many times data are expected and part of the research design in this instance as the missing data are term ignorable ignorable missing data meaning that specific remedies for missing data are not needed it is ignorable you can ignore right because allowances for missing data are inherent in the technique used so you need not worry about it the justification for designating missing data as ignorable 
when do you say it is ignorable is that missing data process is operating at random right that is the observed values are a random sample of the total set of values right or explicitly so in the case of a for example missing completely at random you need not worry about it much right for example missing data resulting from taking a sample of the population rather than gathering data from the entire population in these instances the missing data are those observations in a population that are not included when taking a sample so such conditions can happen so whether you can ignore the data or you cannot ignore that is where the researcher has to use his or her own, own logic okay sometimes it is not ignorable so how do you know that let's see missing data that are not ignorable occur for many reasons and in many situations in general this fall into two categories known and unknown processes sometimes uh, uh, it is a missing data uh, that are not ignorable uh, is you know about it right they are not ignorable but and you know about it sometimes it is an unknown case so let's see what is this now known case it is known to the researcher and they can be identified due to procedural factors such as errors in data i know that there was a mistake in my data entry right that create an invalid course disclosure restrictions sometimes uh, some uh, data are not available to us right failure to complete the entire questionnaire the person is not interested the respondent is not interested right even the poor health of the respondent so he is not willing to fill it up right in this situation the researcher has little control over the missing data process but some remedies may be applicable if the missing data are found to be random no issues if suppose this is conditions are there which you will generally uh, come across in such a condition the researcher can handle such problems by utilizing certain statistical methods which i'll show you unknown missing data now this is a, i don't know why it has happened right are less easily identified and accommodated most often these are re, uh, related directly to the respondent okay example the refusal to respond to certain questions in the last case it was a different thing now here the respondent is refusing he is refusing to answer your question which is common in questions of sensitive nature for example you know income or any controversial issues or your political affiliation for example or when the respondent has no opinion or insufficient knowledge you are asking maybe a rural person poor chap about let us newton's law of gravitation he might not be in a position to answer you and then there is a uh, missing data right the researcher should anticipate these problems how do you handle this now you should be your first job as a researcher is to anticipate and attempt to minimize them in the research design and data collection stages however st they still may occur and the researcher must now deal if suppose after doing everything still there is a, a problem the uh, you must now deal with the resulting missing data but all is not lost right so when the missing data occur in a random pattern right remedies may be available to mitigate so the question is as i said if there are certain questions which people would not answer they are more dangerous because then you should not have first of all in the first hand you should not had you should not have had such questions in your questionnaire and if it is a, it is mandatory then you should maybe had educated the respondent before you have started uh, filling up the questionnaire so anyway now the job is done the data is in your hand now you need to handle it right so how we will uh, go for it second thing is determine the extent which we said now you see some of the missing data are not ignorable right if it is ignorable go ahead no worries if it is not ignorable the researcher must next examine the pattern of the missing data and the extent Okay, what is the pattern is there any pattern of uh, you know uh, uh, the data getting missed right or what is the amount of miss missing data right so for you can check for individual variables variable wise v1 v2 v3 v4 individual cases respondent 1 respondent 2 or total in total if it is sufficiently low then any of the approaches for remedying missing data may be applied even i can tell you if it is very low less than 5% you can just ignore the missing data until unless your your study is a very sensitive study right we say in social science at least less than 5% we are not worried right because it hardly makes uh, any impact on our final uh, you know uh, check uh, final uh, analysis interpretation of the data the data analysis right 
the unresolved issue at this step is what is low, what is low enough. In making the assessment to the extent of missing data, the researcher may find that the deletion of waste variables is reducing will re miss the missing data. Now, for example, let us see, uh, let us go to this case. Now, suppose I see that let us say 210 right response case number 10 here right case number let us say suppose uh, some other let us say some few respondents uh, there are a lot of missing data or in, in typical if you if I see what I can do is just go for a analyze a frequency uh, frequency and I will check let us say let us check this only right. Now, what I am saying is uh, in uh, V 1 there are 49 valid respondents uh, valid case uh, data and 21 is missing in V 2 13 V 4 7 missing V 7. So, now it is very clear that V 1 V 1 V 1 has got a large number of missing data. So, this has got a large number of missing data right. So, in this case should you delete the entire V 1 or would you do something to handle it. If you delete it then in this case though it is ok because you have less such cases, but suppose in some studies which is uh, randomly occurred data and you have found that there are out of 10 3, 4 variables are showing very poor data or less high level of missing data. Will you delete all of them or will you delete let us say there are 100 respondents 20 of them are already showing you poor uh, uh, data. So, a lot of missing data is there will you remove them. So, if you remove maybe there will be a problem sample size adequacy right. So, sampling adequacy or sample size adequacy becomes a issue of concern. So, the researcher has to understand that you have to deal with it right. So, rules of thumb how much missing data is too much missing data under 10 percent. So, I was saying 5 percent up to 10 percent or observation can generally be ignored. This is mostly true for at least social sciences. See, I am what I am saying, please uh, take it from case to case basis because you are if you are studying a very sensitive issue, let us say AIDS patients or a rocket launch, then the case would be different. I am talking about a general social science case, right. Except when the missing data that occurs in a specific random fashion, example concentration in a specific set of questions, attrition at the end of the questionnaire, the number of cases with no missing data must be sufficient the number of cases with no missing data must be sufficient for the selected analysis technique. If replacement values will not be substituted suppose I do not replace and still I have sufficient amount of data then I can ignore no issues with it right. What I will do is I will uh, wind up here right uh, we have understood now the extent and pattern of missing data as I was saying just let us uh, uh, finish with this slide and we will wind up. So, what happens assessing the extent and pattern of missing data? The most direct means of assessing is by tabulating. You tabulate take a frequency maybe the percent of variables with missing data for each case which we just did. The simple process identifies not only the extent of missing data, but any exceptionally high levels of missing data that occur for individual case observations right. So, the researcher should look for any non random see if random is there randomness is there it is ok, but if there is some unsystematic pattern right or so, you know some non randomness is there then uh, you need to be very uh, careful right. The researcher should determine the number of cases with no missing data on any of the variables and which will provide a sample size. So, the, the end uh, when I will wind up here. So, the question is when you are dealing with missing data you have to see whether it is ignorable or not. How do you justify uh, that I have said 10 percent 5 percent whatever you take. The question is is there any relationship between let us say the x and y variable. So, let us say the x and the y right. Suppose there is missing data in y due to x. Now, what is x? x is my independent variable. Let us say as I said in that case age or gender suppose and this is let us say my income. If my income has got lot of missing data due to my gender being because of my uh, the male or female or you know the uh, senior or the uh, young people or something. If there is some kind of a problem occurring then this is a missing at random case that means you should be you need to be careful about it ok. These are also handled by through modeling approaches well, anyway. So, I will wind up here this lecture in the next lecture we will continue with the same data preparation thank you so much.